What I wanted to talk about today, as Melanie said, is basically three things. One, I want to introduce you to a little bit about health disparities, uh, talk about the center, uh, its uh, functions and its mission, and then uh, talk a little bit about nutritional genomics, as Melanie had, had uh, alluded to. As you can see, we're a, a, uh, a multidisciplinary, multi-institutional research and education uh, uh, program sponsored by the National Institute of Health, specifically the National Center for Minority Health and Health Disparities, one of the more recent centers at the NIH. So our mission uh, is to reduce and ultimately eliminate uh, racial and ethnic health disparities resulting from environment gene interactions, particularly those involving dietary, economic, and cultural factors. Our goal is to devise genome-based nutritional interventions to prevent, delay, and treat disease such as asthma, obesity, type 2 diabetes, cardiovascular disease, and prostate cancer. To achieve this goal, the center is taking a multidisciplinary approach to develop culturally competent methods and novel technologies to elucidate the complex interactions between environmental triggers, genes, and disease. And that is a very difficult problem. Surprisingly, um, most people did not know about uh, health disparities until 1985 when Congress uh, commissioned a report uh, to study health in the United States. And they discovered that not every American it has the same access to health care. Not every American suffers the same diseases at the same frequency. Or if they have disease, not every American experiences the same level of severity. So here's just a couple of examples of uh, health disparities. African American men have a 60% greater risk of prostate cancer and a two to three times greater mortality from prostate cancer than white males. Uh, women of Mexican descent are 50% uh, more likely to experience neural tube defect affected pregnancies than non-Latina whites. And for Californians under 65, asthma mortality rates for African Americans is two to four times that of whites and African American children are three times more likely to die from asthma than white children. And lastly, um, minority populations have a higher incidence and greater severity of type 2 diabetes than white Americans. And this, this last example is, is really a, it's a, not only is it a tragedy, but it's also an excellent example of this complex interaction between the environment and genes. And probably one of the most important components of our environment is food. For example, uh, white Americans uh, suffer type 2 diabetes at a rate of 7%. It's 12% for African Americans, 14% for Mexican Americans. It's 15 to 20% for Asian Pacific Islanders. It's 37% uh, for all Native Americans, and it's 50% for Pima Indian. And the interesting thing here is that the Pima Indians that live in Mexico, right across the border from Arizona, have the same type 2 diabetes rate as white Americans. So the Pima Indian have a seven times higher type 2 diabetes rate than white Americans, and their relatives living right across the border have a low rate similar to white Americans. So this tells you that there's something going on here between diet and genes because Pima Indians of Arizona have the same genetic makeup of Pima Indians of Mexico, but they have different diet. Pima Indians of Arizona share the same diet as white Americans in Arizona, but they have a different genetic complex. So this shows that there is this complex interaction that shows that there is a strong genetic component and there is very strong environmental influence uh, in the, just to this one disease, type 2 diabetes. And this is just some of the uh, examples here. Now, there was a major, I call it a maze, major seismic event for research on health disparities for minority, ethnic, racial groups, and the poor in uh, November, 20, on no, uh, November 22, 2000, when President Clinton signed into law Public Act 106-525, the Minority Health uh, and Health Disparities Research and Education Act of 2000. This was a very important act because it established the National Center for Minority Health and Health Disparities, uh, which was formerly in the office of the NIH director. Uh, it had the ability to, to oversee health disparities research, but it did not, did not have the ability to fund any of that research. 
with the establishment of this law in the center, uh, we now have the ability to fund research around the country. And since then, 71 centers of excellence have been established in the United States looking at health disparities among racial ethnic groups, the poor, and the uninsured. The uh, mission of the uh, center is to promote minority health and to lead, coordinate, support, and assess the NIH's effort to reduce and ultimately eliminate health disparities. The way they want to do this is to conduct and support basic clinical, social, and behavioral research, promote research infrastructure and training, foster emerging programs, disseminate information, and reach out to minorities and other health disparity communities. Their vision, they envision an America in which all populations will have equal opportunity to live long, healthy, and productive lives. And I think most of us share that vision for, for Americans. There's their website if you want to go and get more information about the NCMHD. <clears throat> A little bit about what, what is nutritional genomics. Nutritional genomics is one of those very interesting new disciplines that has emerged out of the Human Genome Project. It's a product of what we call the post-genomic era. Thanks to the sequencing of the human genome, we can now look for genetic markers that relate not only to disease, but that also respond to diet. And so you can see here that nutritional genomics lies at the intersection of uh, health, that's medicine, food, typically called nutrition, and genomics. And when I say genomics, I don't mean just genetics. When I mean genomics, I mean genomics, proteomics, uh, bioinformatics, metabolomics, transcriptomics. There are a number of omic technologies that emerged out of the Human Genome Project. And they seem to all be sort of uh, uh, represented in this intersection here. And so this is the area that we're working at. My definition of nutritional genomics is the study of molecular interactions between nutritional stimuli, that's food, and the genome and how these interactions promote health or cause disease. That's the big challenge for you as future re researchers. That's the challenge for me as an aging American. How, how can I adjust my diet to promote health and delay the onset of these age-related diseases? Of course, there are, to make matters more complex, not only are we looking at these, this intersection of these three disciplines, but there is a very strong social cultural context uh, that shapes the way we look at this. And that's one of the purposes of this, of this class. We have uh, taken nutritional genomics and we've tried to define it just like you would put the lines around a, a soccer field. What are the boundaries that encompass nutritional genomics? And we've picked five tenets that we think define nutritional genomics. And the first of these tenets is a very obvious one, and that is improper diet is a risk factor for disease. Second, Dietary chemicals, those are the things that we eat. They're either nutrients, anti-nutrients, or bioactive compounds in the foods we eat can affect gene expression and or, and or genome structure. Those are called mutagens. Third, the influence of diet on health depends on an individual's genetic makeup. Your grandmother and your great-grandmother and your great-grandfather, they sort of knew this, and they would pass these uh, recommendations down to you. That's the folk wisdom of nutritional genomics. It's been passed down for millennia. Eat these things and you will live a long and happy life. And for the most part, we do that. Sometimes we don't. But now we can support that folk wisdom with scientific information based on the Human Genome Project, which points to subtle but important genetic variations between individual to individual, between one race and one ethnicity, how we respond to our nutritional environment and how that affects our health. Number four, uh, genes regulated by diet play a role in chronic disease. That there are genes that are responding to those hamburgers and cheeseburgers, those french fries that we're eating. There are genes that are turning on and off. Probably they're being turned on too much and they will lead to chronic disease. And our goal is to find some of those genes. And lastly, and this is one of the this is the principal objective of nutritional genomics, are eventually diets based on genotype, a knowledge of genetic variation, as well as nutritional requirement and nutritional status. The belief that genome-based dietary recommendations can eventually prevent